The Canadian dollar, it continues to face pressure. It's up slightly today, but otherwise has faced pressure since the election of U.S. now U.S. President-elect Donald Trump, and in particular since Donald Trump's threat to impose levies on all Canadian shipments into the United States. Joining me to talk about it and give his view on where the currency is going is Adam Button, Chief Currency Analyst at Forex Live. He joins us from Peterborough, Ontario. Adam, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, you make the point in some notes that not only is the uh, loony at its lowest level since May of 2020, uh, but that if you factor out the pandemic period, which was uh, a, a period of uh, 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 severe loony weakness between March and May of 2020, and if you factor out a, uh, a brief uh, sell-off in the currency in 2016, we're now at 21-year lows on the Canadian uh, currency. What has gotten us here be beyond the, the obvious, and, and where do you think the currency is going over the next six months to, to a year? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough time for the Canadian dollar. Unlike the pandemic or 2016, it's not really global factors that's driving it or a route in oil as it was in the time in 2016. So you have really the number one thing is that interest rates have worked as intended and the rates got up very high and in an over leveraged economy like Canada, it's caused a pretty dramatic slowdown in the Canadian economy, uh, particularly in housing, which has been one of the main drivers of Canadian growth for the last 20 years. And then the other one would be immigration, which is going into reverse. Um, and that has also fueled a lot of the gains for the Canadian economy in the last 20 years. So without those two legs to stand on, Canada isn't really a great place to invest. Uh, and that's been the main driver. But you have the U.S. dollar side as well. The Canadian dollar isn't particularly weak in a global context. A lot of it is U.S. dollar strength. And that's because interest rates haven't had the same effect in the U.S. where people have 30-year fixed mortgage rates, and they're seeing a boom in, in government spending and also in, in investment spending around AI. I haven't heard you uh, mention the Donald Trump uh, tariff threats. Uh, is that not a factor? No, it is. It's a huge factor. I think everybody in markets right now is wondering what's going to happen. And the Canadian dollar spiked to the lowest levels you know, in four years sin uh, on that threat. But once you read into the threat, well, it was about the border and it was about drugs. And these are two things that Canada and Mexico can fix with a relatively low cost to the economy. Um, so can these are fixable problems. So I actually take it as a positive sign. And the Canadian dollar has recouped almost all of those declines, and so has the peso, because th these problems are going to be fixed. Even overnight, we heard from Trump, who said, you know, Mexico, I had a good meeting, they're going to close the border. Um, so I believe that we're probably headed to a place where we have a North American bloc. Um, again, the winds can shift with Trump pretty quickly, but even with NAFTA, their main issue is transshipping, which is, again, something Canada and Mexico can fix without any cost to the economy. Uh, so that's the optimistic take right now. Again, it can change very quickly with Trump. Uh, so are we at a bottom now in the currency? Uh, I, I know uh, people love to ask you where the, the dollar is going, and that's what I'm asking you right now. Yeah, I'm not optimistic right now. I think a lot of the domestic problems are, are going to worsen. You know, we heard from the Conservatives this week that there are 4.9 million people in Canada on expiring visas in the next 13 months. You know, if you take, I don't believe we have a good track on how many people are in Canada at the moment. And that's driven a lot of the spending. We had a strong retail sales report last week. Maybe that's because of immigration. But if you look at U.S. policy, that the best hope for Canada is that the U.S. wants a weaker dollar. If you look at incoming Treasury Secretary, what he's talked about isn't tariffs as much as using tariffs to threaten countries in order to either weaken the dollar or to get better trade deals. And I think that's something they want from China. And I think it might be the path to accomplish a lot of Trump's goals around GDP growth, trade rebalancing, and a higher stock market. You can't do that with tariffs, but you can do it with a weaker dollar. Uh, so that's a theme to watch. Hmm. Uh, you think the Canadian consumer is doing surprisingly well. T uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, the numbers have been good. You know, we've seen it in private surveys, and we saw it in last week's retail sales data, talking about um, retail sales up 0.7% in October. So the puzzle here is whether this is a wealth effect. People saw house prices almost double in the five years after, you know, around the pandemic. Um, and at the same time, you know, are people spending because of that wealth effect they have using the house like an ATM? Or is it more about people coming into the country and population growth? 
And so we're going to find out um, in the next little while, because people with mortgages are certainly struggling, and they're going to continue to struggle in the next two years. And, and I think that is a, a major headwind, but the consumer has been surprisingly resilient, but the, it could be like a rug pull in the economy and for the Canadian dollar if that starts to come apart and the Bank of Canada has to cut a lot more quickly to stabilize everything. How real is the possibility of importing inflation from the United States uh, with a, uh, a weaker and weaker Canadian dollar? Yeah, it's, it's a problem. It's certainly a problem. It's not that big a part of the inflation pie. I think you'll see it in consumer goods, but right now consumer goods are declining in price. It, at the same time, if you were to see mortgage rates go down, that's the biggest component of inflation right now in Canada. So if we had the Bank of Canada to cut, again, there's a limit to how far it can go. But we've seen it in Canada and elsewhere that you can get to 68 cents, maybe even 66 cents without it really catalyzing into domestic inflation, particularly if those cuts are because of a weak economy and a declining employment picture.